Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da ayya la habati fillah Continuing on our treaties, uh, Shara Sunnah by Imam Babahari rahmatullahi alayhi We reach the portion of the treaties uh, the 28th point where Imam Babahari said rahmatullahi alayhi the best of the companions who's referring to the companions of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam He said the best of this ummah after the passing away of its Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Abu Bakr and then Umar and then Uthman This is what is reported to us from Ibn Umar who said, we used to say whilst Allah's Messenger was amongst us the best of the people after the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Abu Bakr, then Umar, then Uthman The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would hear of that and not criticize it then the best of the people after them are Ali, Talha, Az-Zubair, Sa'ad ibn uh, Abi Waqqas, uh, Sa'id ibn Zayd, Abdurrahman ibn Awf, Abu Ubaidah, Amr ibn al-Jarrah. <coughs> All of them were suitable to be Khalifa. Then the best of the people after them are the best, are the rest of the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first generation amongst whom he was sent the first Muhajirs and Ansar, those who prayed towards both Qiblas. Then the best of the people after them are those who accompanied the Messenger of Allah for a day, a month, a year, or less, or more than that. We ask Allah to have mercy upon them. We mention their virtues and remain silent about any mistakes they made. And we do not speak about a single one of them except favorably. As the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, uh, when my companions are mentioned, then withhold. You know, keep silent. Sufyan ibn Ayyina said, He who speaks a single word against the companions of Allah's Messenger وسلم, is an innovator. Those are just a couple of narrations about the fadail uh, of the companions of the Prophet and that this is from the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and this is what distinguishes Ahl Sunnah from many groups and of course first and foremost from the Rafid the Shia those people who criticize the companions those people who make takfir of the companions those people who curse the companions as a part of their religion that's a part of their faith and that makes uh, them on the opposite side of the scale as Ahl Sunnah you know, far from Ahl Sunnah. But however, it's not to the extent of those people who might worship companions, like possibly some extreme Sufis and others, who might go to the extent of worshiping uh, companions and seeking Tabarak and trying to find their graves and, and seeking blessings from their graves or the places they prayed and, and so forth and such. And this is another extreme. So Ahl Sunnah is in the middle. <clears throat> Ahl Sunnah loves the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They don't speak evil about them. They believe that they were the best of generations. They witnessed the revelation as it was being revealed. They compiled the revelation. They were the companions and beloved to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He chose them as companions and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala chose them as companions uh, of the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam and that they were the best of this ummah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, The Prophet ﷺ said, The best people uh, is my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. The Prophet ﷺ said, If you have the Jews, then 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 you have the Prophet Sallallahu said, after letting us know that the other nations would break into sects and that this nation, the nation of Muslims, would break into sects, all of them in the fire except one, and then the companions, they asked, who are they, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And he replied to them, alayhi salatu wasalam, saying, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. So that shows us also the fadail of the companions. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Asami wa ta'ala mari al-Muslim fi ma'ala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Asami wa ta'ala Kala isma' wa ti' O attaqullah 
وسمع وطاء وإن كان عبد حبشيا فإنهم فإنكم من يعيش منكم فإنهم من يعيش منكم في سيرة اختلاف كثيرة فعليكم بسنة وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said, <coughs> uh, Fear Allah and listen and obey to the Muslim, hear and obey or follow the commands of the Muslim ruler, meaning uh, even if he was an Ethiopian slave. And verily those who will live after me will see many differences. You're going to see ikhtilaf in kathira. And then he gave us a prescription. He said, so then it's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifa. Who is that? Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, radiallahu ta'ala, majma'in. So Ahabatifillah, again, showing us the importance of the sunnah of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, majma'in, especially those Khulafa al-Arba, Abu Bakr, wa Uthman, uh, Abu Bakr, uh, wal Umar, wa Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ali, radiallahu ta'ala, majma'in, that their sunnah is also mu'tabar, that what they how they practiced and understood Islam is uh, an obligation for us to follow as long as it was not in an issue of ijtihad which differed from what we have that's sahih from the Prophet ﷺ. But those things that the Sahaba had uh, ijma or united upon, then there's no doubt that's a hujjah, that's delil, that's evidence in the sharia. And that is uh, considered ijma. And that is from the asl of the jama'ah, which is the sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, majma'in. So that shows us the importance of the sahaba. And go back to the books of Creed, not just Imam Babahari's book, but we'll, we'll continue on. And there, there'll be other narrations and there'll be other uh, points where he mentions about the importance of love in the sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, majma'in. But go to the many books of the salaf, many of those old books in Aqidah. Go to uh, uh, Sunnah Imam Ahmed. Uh, Alalak uh, Asula uh, Sunna uh, Asula Sunna or Asula uh, Itikar Ahl Sunnati Go to uh, Asunna Lil Khalal. Go to uh, many of the books in Aqidah, the early books, the early books that were, were uh, compiled and, and put together, and some of the reasons why were because people had began to go astray. New ideologies had begun to permeate Islam for the need to begin to defend and preserve the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnati wa Jama'ah, the Aqidah that the Muhammad that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left behind in his Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'in about issues of Iman, about issues of um of, of about the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'in, about their status, about the uh Al Asma'i wa Sifat, you know, issues of Tawheed, all of those issues are were being dealt with in the early books of uh, of Creed because because the uh, people had begun begun to innovate in the religion new people who were not Arab and were not uh, uh, familiar with the language so then they uh, from their misunderstandings in the language began to come in and sometimes innovate and some people with just new ideologies they had and, and previous from their uh, deans from before and all kind of other things and, and then the uh, because of the preservation of the text of philosophy and the translation into the Arabic language and stuff this began to affect cer certain ulama who began to write and began to um, uh, innovate in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and distort the principles uh, of Ahl Sunnati wa Jama'ah so this made a need for these books of Aqidah this is why we have these books of Aqidah. This is the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved the Aqidah through Kitab ilah, through preserving the Quran and, and preserving the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and preserving the Madhab of the Salaf that there were men and women who stood strong uh, regardless of persecution, regardless of alienation, regardless that they gave sometimes and only a few people heard them or people ridiculed them. But they stuck to Kitab Ilah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the Salaf and they wrote and preserved those issues of creed and itikad uh, even at the expense of their own lives so that we would have this uh, today and until the day of judgment bi idnillah ta'ala so this is the importance of staying on the madhab of the Salaf and understanding the makan or the position of the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, as 
uh, the Prophet والسلام, said, either dhukira ashabi fahimsiku, that if you, uh, if my sahaba, my companions are mentioned, then keep silent. <coughs> and also, Imam Baba Hari in this uh, chapter, in some of the, um, uh, in some of the, the various uh, texts of the same book, because of course we didn't have printing presses in the time when some of the, when these books were being collected. So then sometimes there was different versions, or there was different copies, or slightly different things. And in some of the copies, you'll find that Imam Baba Hari he mentioned a narration about the Sahaba, which you find many people, especially some of our brothers uh, in Jamaat Tablik, and that are sometimes muta'asib uh, fi uh, following the Hanafi madhab, that sometimes they'll follow this hadith, which is a fabricated hadith. It's a hadith that uh, Imam Baba Hari, I believe he mentioned in some of the uh, nusuk, that which uh, says that if you follow uh, my, my sahaba are like the uh, like the moon and anyone who uh, any one of them uh, the, the Prophet ﷺ said this is a fabricated hadith though my companions are like the stars whichever of them you follow you will be guided so this narr narration is a fabrication and uh, many of the imma of hadith uh, declared that it's fabricated, that it's not even, it's not weak, it's just plain fabricated. It's not, it has no uh, asal in the uh, uh, in the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is why it's important to have a to, and know, to know that the loving the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu ta'ala majma'een, is a part of the aqeed of ahl sunnah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of those who truly love the companions and may Allah bless us to be of those who are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah forgive us of our many sins and any mistakes I made were from myself and any things I said correct was from Allah azza wa jal wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam